So for those who are the first time, uh, we normally would have a simple prayer to draw us to be open to the Word of God. And then we would be uh, reading the text. Uh, it, would, it might be able, we might be able to flash it, those who don't have the exploring God's Word. Sad to say it's already out of print. Uh, this one belongs to Michelle Flores. If you are around, please come forward. She already asked me if she could have a copy that I was not able to give her. However, tonight, as I said, is a family. Uh, this is Mon Arguelles. This is his wife, Merlin. This is their youngest, Migi. Uh, Miguel. Um, they were the ones who introduced me to this kind of Bible study. It's not me. They were, however, taught by Father Arlo Yap, and the intention is that it could be done in a family. How old are you, Miki? Uh, 22 turning 23 na po. 22 turning 23. But how many years in Bible study, LBS? Since mga 12 po ako. So it's been 11 years that Miki, 10 years? He was 10 years old. So now that he's turning 23, nearly 13 years that he's been doing this. But I met Migi, I think, around 11 years old or 12. He facilitated a Bible study like this. In, U in UST, in front of 200 people. He facilitated it also for all the parish priests of the Diocese of Paranaque. Tonight, he'll do it with you. So itong may bahay na to, the mag-asawa, mag I knew Mon Arguelles is a Bosconian. He's also a Bosconian. And I knew him um, way back when he was a very young person. And uh, he, he continued his life. Um, he would tell you later on maybe if in the sharing. But what I know is that he has established a similar Bible study like this in the maximum security in Bilibid. And BP. And the beautiful thing that Mon was able to develop is that, you know, in the National Believed Prison, that to this day they're still having the Bible study, even though he's no longer facilitating it there. Um, you cannot cross over to a different gang, like Batang City Jail, cannot cross over to Okso or Sige Sige or whatever gang. But because of the Bible study that they did by cells, uh, those who were capable, he trained, they were even welcomed in those of not of their gang. The Word of God makes wonders. I hope it'll make a wonder in your family. They have got six children, tama ba ako? Two boys and four girls. First four are girls, the next two are boys. And uh, the eldest, now married with the, with the child, Hannah, uh, did this when she was still single in Cebu. And to this day, they're doing that on their own. Her second, their second is in, uh, uh, in Ireland. And uh, I don't know if they're doing something, but the third is in Australia. And he has also done Bible study. Camille was, I think, in Laos, and she was doing something there for Bible study. And these guys are also doing something for Bible study. In fact, I'll share you later on what Mig and his brother Paolo was able to do because of the Bible study. So maybe we could have, have first a prayer. Will I surprise you, Merlin, to say the prayer? Whatever you want. They don't have to prepare. They know what to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we just praise and thank you for this opportunity, O oh Lord God, to be with brothers and sisters during this liturgical Bible study. We give praise and thanks to you, Lord God, for all the blessings we have received from you for the past, O oh Lord God, and for the future. Lord God, uh, thank you so much for your word. And Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to 
give us the grace so that we can understand your message for us for this coming Sunday. For this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you, Merlin. I believe that it would be the dad, the husband, that will do the reading of the gospel. Uh, it's not yet flashed. Um, but uh, we shall, those who have this uh, booklet can go to the third Sunday of Easter. So we are doing this coming Sunday. The text of uh, the scriptures are taken on the coming Sunday of this. Uh, for those who would like to see it in the terms of page, it is 47, but we shall go to the gospel first, which is on page 50. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astonished, has, ha, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And he said to them, How foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe! All the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer? these things and enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us. For it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then... They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were, say, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had happened what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them 
in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So our way of doing this Bible study is made simple so that anyone who can read like a seven-year-old can participate. This is actually meant for families as these young people grew up like him for over nearly 13 years doing Bible study at home every week. So what we will be doing now is a question and answer way. What do you mean by question and answer? Um, Migi now will make a question almost lifted from the text that we, that Mon, his father, read. But now we, now you have it on the board, Tamaba. Now having it on the board, you can just simply answer the question of Migi by reading the text. Why? It will now be you reading it. Therefore, it will be a third time you will hear the same words. But it will go deeper into your psyche. Okay, so Migi, let's begin. Okay, so um, sa gospel natin, unting background lang. So this happened uh, three days after nung, ano, nung crucifixion ni Jesus. Okay, so punta ngayon tayo sa verse 13, sa unang verse. Ayan. Okay. So, um, anong day yon ng week? Anong day yon ng week? And saan daw sila yung mga disciples ni Jesus papunta? Okay, so papunta sila sa Emmaus and it was the first day of the week. Okay, so in verse 14 naman, um, ano daw yung pinag-uusapan nila? And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. Okay, so and then in verse 15, habang nag-uusap sila, um, uh, sino and uh, ano yung tinanong? Ay, sino yung, uh, ano pala yung tinanong sa kanya ni Nilji? That while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. Okay, so si Jesus. Ayan, pero nung verse 16, nakilala ba nila agad si Jesus? But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Okay, so hindi. And then in verse 17, okay, Ano ngayon yun tinanong niya dun sa dalawa? He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. Okay, so in verse 18 naman, um, sino dito yung uh, isang disciple and ano yung nireply niya kay Jesus? One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place? Okay. So in verse 19 naman, um, ano, ano yung reply ni Jesus? And then, um, follow-up question, uh, ano yung pagkakakilala nila kay Jesus of Nazarene? What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. Okay, so yun pala yung pagkakilala nila kay Jesus, no? Prophet and um, mighty indeed. Ayan. <laughs> and now, um, in verse 20, ano daw ba ginawa ng mga tao dit na mga hudyo dito sa Jesus na kay Jesus How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to the sentence of death and crucifixion So pinapatay nila si Jesus Ayan 
So, malungkot sila kasi ano ba yung yung akala nila na uh, yung gagawin dapat ni Jesus. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Ayan, so redeemer, ayan yung pagkaka ayan yung hope nila. Okay. And then, um, nung verse 20, sa verse 22 naman, um, ano ba yung nakita nila dun sa tomb? Nung meron pumunta dun sa tomb ni Jesus? Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. Okay. So, walang body. Pero ano pa yung nakita nila in verse 23? And then, sa, sa verse 24, sila lang ba ang nakita ng ganun? Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they are Yon. And so, in verse 25, nung pagkakwento nila, nila neto kay Jesus, anong sabi sa kanila ni Jesus? And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. And then, 26, continue. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into His glory? And then in verse 27, ano ba yung ni-reveal sa kanila ni, ni Jesus? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. So nasa scriptures pala lahat yan. No? Okay. So in verse 28, um, uh, nung nakarating sila sa village, Sasama ba sa kanila si Jesus noong time na yan? As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus gave the impression that it was he was going on further. Okay, so in verse 29, nung, nala, nung na-realize nila na hindi pa doon si Jesus, ano ang niyaya nila sa kanya? But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Oh, yun. And then in verse 30, um, so magkakaroon na sila ng supper. Ano nangyari dito sa supper nila? And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. After that, yung na- nangyari yung ano, yung act na yun, ano yung na-realize nila? That, their eyes were open and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Yun, so si Jesus pala yun. Okay, and then in verse 32, um, ano na napag, ano yung napagtanto nila sa isa't isa? Ano yung napag-usapan nila? Okay, so in verse 33, um, after nung incident na yun, ano yung na- naisipan nila gawin? So they set out at once, returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, has been raised and has appeared to Simon. Okay, and then the, in verse 35, ano yung um, ano yung tinestify ng dalawa? You know with this, you know the whole story. You can even narrate it without the Bible. And what is beautiful is that Migi, in Tagalog, 
used Tagalog words that were actually a translation of the text in English. And so it really becomes more powerful when you have this kind of question and answer. Ang tawag po doon, himay. Himay. Brothers and sisters, those who are new, if we will stop here, we will be Protestants. We'll only be Protestants. But if we take the first reading, then we will be Catholic. Why? Because we don't just take a text of Scripture. We are using what the church has placed in the Sunday celebration. And the church gave us more than just the gospel. In that sense, the church must have told us, you know, if you read the first reading, you will get really what God wants to say. In fact, but it will take much longer, including the second reading, you'll really definitely know what he's telling you. Because if you just do the first, the gospel, you will tell us what you think God is saying. But when you put it with the first reading, you will already now say, ah, God is really saying this, not what I think he is saying. So we go back to this. Merlin now uh, will be the one to read the gospel and his, uh, the, the first reading, sorry, and her husband will be the one to make himay. Kawawa kasi to si, ano yung, bait bait eh. Okay. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you are staying in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand. I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption." You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he, see, he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. After reading it, we would want now to deepen uh, that reading by ourselves being asked by Mon to also read it. And it will make us recognize the depth of this particular text of Scripture. So in verse 22, okay, Verse. Okay, 
So in verse 14, what did Peter do? Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, stay in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, listen to my word. So in the eyes of, uh, of uh, Peter, who was Jesus? So in verse 23, okay, how did uh, Peter understand the, the events that had just happened of the crucifixion and rising of Jesus in verse 23? This man delivered up by the set plan, and for knowledge of God, you killed him. You see lawless men to crucify him. And in verse 24, what happened to Jesus? Okay, so Peter was saying, nakaplano na to, nakatakda na. And okay, how far back did, uh, uh, oh, what proof uh, did, uh, did uh, Peter uh, use to support the, this claim that he has in verse 25? Let's just continue on reading. Therefore, my heart has been glad, my tongue has exalted, my flesh to you dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Okay. In verse 29, according to Peter, what can be confidently said say uh, what we, what can be confidently said about uh, about david brothers one can confidently say to you about the patriarch david that he died and was buried his tomb is in our midst to this day but who is david according to peter in verse 30 So, so in verse 31, what did uh, David see? He foresaw, spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that neither was he abandoned in the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. So in verse 32, okay, what did God do to Jesus? God raises Jesus, of this we are all witness. In verse 33, what else happened to Jesus? Thank you. So now you realize that um, the gospel is an event. Diba? May nangyari eh. Pangyayari. Event. Whereas, we could say the first reading is a sermon. Diba? Yung first, yung gospel, it's an event that happened to two disciples. Whereas, in the first reading, it is this time Peter, head of the apostles, that was speaking in their name, no, together with the eleven, and gives his audience an interpretation of what they experienced. Diba? Normally, in Sundays, what we would call ordinary time, Advent, Lent, the first reading is from the Old Testament. This time, in the whole of Easter, it will come from the Acts of the Apostles. We will share something more about that after this Bible study. Now, gagawa po tayo ng something exciting. What is that? We need to compare to read 
yan ang mahirap dyan sa dumb board na yan, you will not see it. But you have now to look at the gospel and look at the first reading. So, those who have the text, you should have one finger on the first reading and the other finger on the gospel like this. So, if you have a Bible, when you come next time, it will be also good. So, looking at the gospel, then the first reading, we will look for something similar. Ano ba yung magkapareho? Kasi if God is the one to speak, He is consistent. Ano ba ang sinasabi niya? Must be somehow connected. Gospel and first reading. So tingnan po natin. Sino, ano, ang pareho na makikita natin sa gospel maging sa first reading. Kayo na ngayon ang magsasalita. This is now your turf. Who, what, is common, similar in the gospel and in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Meron kayo na notice? Do you have one? Yes, please. In the first reading, Peter. Wow. Yung kita nyo? Pinag-aralan nyo ba itong reading na ito? O ngayon lang? It's your realization. So, our dear brother realized yung sinabi ni Jesus tungkol sa kanya, already said by the prophets, this time Peter in the first reading is the one to quote, who is that? David. And what was foretold already by David happened to Jesus. Okay? Or is what Jesus said would, happen to, would have happened to him. So, ibig sabihin, naka, ano, nakalagdana. Set plan. Set plan by God. Okay. Wonderful. That's a very big area of realization. Meron pa po. No, uh, you have to, dito po, mag-aaral tayo. You have to work on that. Don't go to stock knowledge. You have to basa. Sabi ni Eddie Soriano, basa. We have to extract from the text. Anyone else? My dear lady? Wala pa? Wala ka, pero did you, eh, parang meron ka ba nang nauulinigan? Being? Ah, testimony. Ah, sa gospel, sino nagbigay ng testimony? Yes. When they returned, they testified what happened to them. This time, in the first reading, who testified? Peter. Oh. So, may element dito maganda. In both readings, may saksi. They spoke of their experience. Okay? In Peter, as a homily, as a, as a exhortation. Dito sa gospel, balita. As an experience that just happened. Thank you. Wala yung gospel, sa wala yung text. Pero nakita niya ang connect. Si Sunny, nag-iisip. Meron ka nakuha? Meron ka pa nakita? Si Ami. Wala pa? Anyone? We have former, I mean former, we have Bible study members here. We've been doing this for six years, seventh year na namin yan. We've been doing this. Yeah, si Francis, my dear Pamangken, same name. Raise your voice lang, Francis. 
Yes. 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 So Jesus opened the scriptures and it burned something in their hearts. Actually, they remembered, they knew the scriptures, but they did not realize the right interpretation. Tignan natin yung Francis. These disciples knew the scriptures, but they did not connect. Diba? What happened with Jesus na, alam na pa doon, it was Jesus who helped them connect. Pero may, yung connect na yan, yung connect, gusto ko malaman yan eh. Sa so first reading, what did Peter do to connect the Old Testament, David, with Jesus? Ano yung kinonect niya? Eric, my brother? Raise him? Ano, what, what is in the Old Testament about raising him from the dead? The body will not be corrupted, nor they will be in the other world. Yon sabi ni Peter, the meaning of David, that he will body will not be corrupted, will not remain among the dead. That's called nether world. That is raising from the dead. That is the New Testament, and that is Jesus. His body will not corrupt. Bakit? Three days pa lang. Instead, if you read John chapter 11, si Lazarus mabaho na. Fourth day na. Four days na. Kay Kristo, three days pa lang. Walang corruption. Because that is not the plan of God. That death will not really completely overcome His Son. So yun, Peter was the one who put that correct interpretation. Sinabi niya, remember, di ba, anong version, Mon? Brothers, di ba? Nakayo dito. Anong version? He says, 31. 31. What does 31 say, Mon? He neither... Yeah, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah that neither he abandoned to the netherworld nor did his flesh see corruption. That is very important. That he was able to connect that Jesus is truly raised up because this is what is already said about him in the Old Testament. Kausap ni Peter, Hudyo. Alam nila ang scripture like the two. But they could not connect. And this time, if in the gospel, Jesus connected the scripture about him to the two, Peter now is connecting the Old Testament to the people. Meron pa isa. What Jesus did in the gospel, now Peter is being a testimony, is the one doing it. Okay? So, tatlo na, no? Sabi nyo, na yung what is foretold in the Old Testament is what happened to Jesus. In fact, as we said now, Peter uses the words of David and says, this is the meaning that Jesus was raised from the dead. His body did not see corruption. He was not left into the netherworld. And 
what is the first one? Sabi nyo, na ha? witnesses. May nagtestigo. Anyone else would like to say something similar? Bigi, meron ko nakita. S- siguro yung ano na lang. Uh, sa parehong reading kasi, meron sil- uh, dinescribe nila yung pagkakilala nila kay Jesus of Nazarene. Uh, sa, sa first reading, uh, sa gospel is uh, si sila Cleophas, they said na Jesus, Nazar- Jesus the Nazarene who was prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people. The same with the first reading na um, Peter uh, described uh, Jesus as uh, a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs and which God worked through him. Okay. Pareho pareho. What the Jews that Peter was talking to And what the two were telling Jesus because they thought he didn't know anything about the Jesus of Nazareth. And he was the one na pala. Pero ano yung, yung unang testimony na ito? That he was of Nazareth. Totoo naman, di ba? Everybody knew. That he did miracles? Everybody knew. That he was mighty also in words? Everybody knew. Di ba? Okay. Na mataba ako, everybody sees. Pari ako, everybody knows. Di ba? But what you believe, not everybody knows. What's deep in your heart, not all, except those who know you. Your family. Di ba? Not everything about you is known. Ito, because they met him in the resurrection. Yung una, everybody knows, the Jews also. And then he died. But they did not see him alive. Only few. And among them, the two disciples of Emmaus, now Peter. Yes. In fact, nakalagay yan sa gospel. Paano natin nalaman na si Peter also met the risen Lord? Look at that. Sabi nila. So they set out, verse 33. 33 said, they set out, returned to Jerusalem, found the, uh, together with the eleven, and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised, appeared to Simon. Simon Peter yun eh. Yun. Now it's Peter who testifies, yeah, he appeared to me as they ap- he appeared to Cleophas. Anyone else? Nakita nyo? Any connect pa? So, actually, we're not yet even more than 40 minutes. We just began at 7. It's not yet 8. Halos tapos na tayo po eh. O ngayon, itong pinakamaganda. Ano bang gustong sabihin talaga ng Diyos sa inyo, sa atin, na dapat nating malaman pero maisabuhay? Anong gusto ng Diyos ang sinasabi niya, Hoy, giseng, itong gusto ko sabihin sa iyo, this coming Sunday, isabuhay mo to. Ano yun? Yes? Okay, yun ang dating sa'yo. Kung naniniwala ka kay Jesus, you also say that we will have life eternal. Pero alam nyo, yan ang stock knowledge eh. I-connect nyo sa scripture. I know that. We all know that. Now, if you believe in me, you will have life eternal. 
Pero kunin natin more and more from the Scriptures. Okay, naniniwala tayo si Kristo'y muling nabuhay. Di ba? Sabi ni Peter, sabi ni Cleophas, and the two, tama ba? Anong sinasabi ng Diyos dito sa'yo? Yes. Bakit? So, pag nalilis ka ng landas, imimit ka ng Diyos ni Kristo. Para magbalik loob ka, balik ka. Para? Kasi may mission ka eh, no? Anong mission niya? Spread the good news. Okay. So, ang pinapasabi sa kanya, Oy, pagtapos ng linggon to, ha? Ikaw, magbimission ka ngayon. Yung nasabi sa'yo. Yes. The Eucharist. O, anong nangyari? So for you, ang dating ng Diyos, sinasabi, andyan siya. So the Sunday, you will meet the Lord uncorrupted body in the body of Christ in the Eucharist. In the breaking of the bread. Sabi mo? Okay. Ano pinapagawa sa'yo? Hindi, sabi ng Diyos. Siya, pabayaan natin siya. Ano pinapagawa sa'yo kaya? Pinapasimba ka ba? Ito sabi ng Diyos, anong dating sa'yo? Kasi what you told us is beautiful. It's, it summarizes something. But anong dating sa'yo? Yeah. Ah, meeting the risen Lord in the Eucharist becomes the source of our strength. Okay. Magiging malakas ang loob ko. Di ba? Good. Pinapalakas niya ang loob ko pag pupunta ako sa kanya sa Eucharist kasi nandun siya. The same breaking of the bread at Emmaus is the same breaking of the bread at the Eucharist. Anything else? Yes, Bea. Ay, hindi si Bea. Sorry. Jesus is alive, He's risen from the dead, and He speaks to us. So, ang Diyos, si Jesus Christo, kinakausap tayo. Dahil doon, ano? Ah, okay. Ang action doon is, I will need to acknowledge His presence. God is telling me because He's risen from the dead and speaks to us, He is alive, I need to acknowledge His presence. Alam niyo acknowledge? Act on your knowledge. Kasi pag sinamang i-acknowledge ko sa'yo, Hoy, si Jesus, buhay. Ipapasa ko. Anything else? Ano pa ang dating ng Word of God to you? Ano ba salita ng Diyos? At somehow, what does it do to affect you? What is it affecting to you? Bea, nakas- nakagano naman kamay mo eh. <laughs> Na pressure.
Thank you, Bea. So, when you have a true Christ encounter, you cannot just be the same again. Iba? Amen. So, ikaw nag-amen ka. Ano sa tingin mo? Sabi ni Bea. So, I can father two things. Eh. One is uh, witnessing uh, by your life makes Jesus alive. And the other thing is every disciple boldly proclaims. Hindi lang. Because kung titignan natin, the two disciples, as our, our brother was saying, naglaho ni silang disipulo eh. But because of that encounter, nung na-encounter nila, hindi na sila nag, nag-antay pa para ipabukas. That, that same moment, they went back to Jerusalem. Why? They needed to proclaim Jesus is alive. In the same way, Peter, doon sa first reading, it, the reading was just after the Pentecost. Eh. But before the Pentecost, Peter was in hiding. Eh. Naglaho ng disciple. Wala na. Pero because of that spirit, here we see G- Peter talaga na palaban, boldly proclaiming what happened to Jesus and that Jesus is alive. So every disciple is, is uh, uh, a proclaimer, uh, an evangelizer. Yan. Thank you. So, hindi tayo pwedeng umalis ng simbahan ng linggo na pumasok and go out the same. It's got to do something with us if we really met the Lord. And we do in the breaking of the bread. And there are two things. No? Now, it will change you, but you would have to boldly say what happened to you. Yes, please. Right. I think you're experiencing it right now. Because you're now proclaiming. Yeah. Beauty. Um, before we end, no? Because there are still many other Bible studies. But maybe Mon can testify to us the change that happened to him because of the Word of God. Mon, sabi ba lang, ano bang pinagdaanan mo ng konti? Father, I don't know where to start. Marami kasi. <laughs> but siguro na lang itong, itong Bible study because um, eh, katulad ng maraming katoliko, yeah, we, we pray with scripture, we meditate on scripture, but uh, iba yung na-encounter namin si Jesus sa, sa, sa silta niya. And uh, through the Bible study, uh, ang totoo niyan, uh, may in, nagtuturo ako ng mag-liturgical Bible study, but never done it in my family. Okay, yun yung, and the Lord confronted me. Sabi niya nung, nung isang advent, uh, I want your home to be my, my manger. The Word of God. In, sabi ko nga, oo nga, ano, ang dami, dami kong seminar na ginagawa to teach the Bible, the, the liturgical Bible, but not in our home. So, inibita ko yung mga bata. I thought it was an easy thing. Eh, nung pagdating nung araw na sinabi ko, oh, magbabible study tayo, Ah, they were all against it. <laughs> so, atras ako, nagulat ako. <laughs> because papatayin yung TV. Tapos, the idea that they had, yung Bible study was boring. Till, that was Christmas, pinala, pinalampas ko. Till finally, Ash, we, uh, Ash Wednesday. It was haunting me, haunting me. Biro mo, prayer time ko pa ng, ng Advent. Tapos, ito, uh, <laughs> Let na, Ash Wednesday. Sabi niya, I want 
your home to be my 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 dwelling okay so once more inimbita ko yung mga bata uh, magba bible study tayo this time nakikiusap ako sa inyo pagbigyan niyo lang ako minsan at ang sa loob loob ko uh, pag humindi sila sasabihin ko lord sinubukan ko naman talaga eh di ba absuelto na ako <laughs> Parang ganun yung drama ko kay Lord. So, uh, I invited them. Uh, pagbigyan niyo ko minsan. Okay? Minsan lang. Okay? Pag uh, hindi niyo nagustuhan, hindi ko na uulitin. Okay? So, they agreed. Okay? Sige, dad. Sige, pagbibigyan ka namin. Okay? So, uh, kailan tayo magbabibong sa adi? Agad-agad sila. Bukas, bukas. Baka kapag next week pa, magkalimutan. So, bukas. Oh, kaya Thursday pa. Wednesday, Ash Wednesday eh. So, nung Thursday, nililigpit ko na. Ako na nagliligpit ng mga pinggan. Ano, tapos, oh, magbabibus na di tayo. Ah, rebelde na naman. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Nagkasundo tayo. Nagagawin natin yung Bible study today. O, oh, sige, di, pinagbigyan nila ako. So, tapos, nung nakita nila, ganito yung methodology namin, na uh, involved sila, ganyan. Yun. Tapos, sa den, oh, ano, gusto nyo ba magbabibus study uli tayo? Hindi naman pala boring, dad, eh. So, their, their, their idea ng Bible study, eh, boring. So, yan. From there on, every Thursday na kami nag-Bible study. Okay? Tapos, nung si Cheska, uh, nag, nag, nag-aral sa Los Baños at nag-thesis, so, hindi na masyadong, tama ba? Basta nag-shift ng Friday. Paano pa uwi siya ng Friday? So, Friday na kami nag-Bible study. So, yun po yung isang malaki-malaki na pinagpapasalamat ko sa Panginoon na pinagkaloban po kami na itong liturgical Bible study as a family. And it did great, great wonder. Siguro si Merlin can attest to some of it. <laughs> Ay, yung, nung, yung mga bata, may apat kasi kami yung mga anak na babae, tapos dalawa nga yung lalaki. Yung dalawa, parati silang magkasunod kasi. Parati sila nag-aaway. Parating uh, meron silang hindi pagkakaintindihan. konti lang, mag-aaway na sila. Tapos uh, nung tumagal-tagal ng konti, na nag-Bible study kami, unti-unti silang dalawa, in, nagiging mas mapagbigay na sila. No? Maliit na bagay pero makikita mo. Dahil kasi pag, pagkatapos nung Bible study, meron kang ano eh, Uh, tinatawag na challenge or uh, ano yung dapat mong gawin. Uh, so, sa kanila, nag-stick sa kanila na kung yung message tumama sa kanila, so ginagawa nila. So, merong action sila na ginagawa. Si Migi siguro, may, meron din. Pada si Migi, uh, hindi yan, may chores kami, naguhugas, paghuhugas ng pinggan, ganyan. Hindi naguhugas ng pinggan, pag-assign pag sa kanya, tapos yung mga sisters niya ang pumupuno na lang. Tapos nung one Bible study, ang ano eh, ano ba yon Live the love. Ang, live the love ang aming hip, ano, ang challenge. So yung pagmamahal, eh, sa buhay daw. So oh, ikaw, Migi, o oh, sige, mag, gagawin ko na yung chores ko. Imagine the whole week, He did the washing of the dishes as scheduled in the doon sa chores. Sabi nung mga ate niya, grabe pala tong Bible study, napagbabago si Miggy. <laughs> Paano nagugas na pinggan? At nakatuwa, in fact, sinabi ng mga kapatid niya, Miggy, sinabi mo yan, ha? Sabi nila, hindi, sinabi ng Diyos yan kay Miggy. Kaya malakas. Hindi naman ang mga kapatid niya, you know, pinupukpuk siya eh. Binsu eh. Di ba? And one day, at what I know with Miggy, nagpaalam sa magulang na hindi na sila sasama sa kanilang misa. Kasi ni 6 o'clock in the evening ang mass ng family eh. Nas, maging maaga kayo, no? In the morning. Nagalit ang dalawa. After all the Bible study, hindi na tayo magpa-family, sabi niya. Dad, Meron kami dalawang kaibigan, kalaro. Hindi nasisimba ng mga magulang. Dadali namin sila sa umaga. Kasi sabi namin sa kala, pag napakisimba tayo sa umaga, mahaba ang ating laro na after that. <laughs> Napahiya yung tatay. <laughs> Naging misyonero na eh. 
naka, nakadawit na ng dalawang ka, kaibigan na hindi nagsisimba dahil sa mga magulang. Tapos naisama, naisama niyo sa Bible study. Uh, naisama na rin nila later on sa Bible study ng, ba, ng bahay. Well, I'm sharing you this because we're not doing Bible study here. If you can do it on your own, you did not come here. You may now put it in the family. Now, don't worry. As you go through this, it can happen. But the important is that you also help me prepare my homily. <laughs> Honest. My homilies come from the Bible study. This one. Sige, Megi. Meron lang akong gustong idagdag since parang feeling ko sobrang ano, in line siya sa sinasabi ni Father. Ayan. Kasi dito sa gospel natin, di ba? Um, sila Cleophas nung na nung na-witness nila si Jesus. Ang sabi dito, gusto ko point out. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem. So yung response nila, immediate, may urgency. Ayan. So, ngayon, since, ano, siguro naman, experience talaga natin si, ano, si Jesus ngayon. Ayan. Tina-challenge ko kayo na mag-testify. Ayan. Dalin, oh, <laughs> dalin natin sa bahay, ganyan, sa, ano, i-share natin tong ano, liturgical Bible study. Yun. Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. And you know what, no? Malagi, malagi, madalas nagko-complain kayo, mga millennials, mga millennials, walang ginawa kundi mag, 
smartphone, smartphone. Oh, nakita kayo isang millennial, oh. Hindi naman lahat. Di ba? But why is he this kind of a millennial? Ang kanyang, ano ba yung gin-raduate sa Benil? Hindi pa, pero ang tinitake ko ngayon is music production po. Oh, music production. Batang, talagang millennial, yung gusto niya, musika. How to produce music. He's studying still in Benil. Okay? He's really be- millennial, pero, but with the gospel, he's in the right path. So isipin niyo na lang ang inyong magiging mga apo na walang magawa sa smartphone kundi maglaro. <laughs> no, there's another way. And the Word of God can do that to happen. Thank you so much for, for this evening. Sometimes when I am probably not able to come over, we have people. I hope one of those times it will be you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night. Trip back home.